Today I'll be showing you some of the all new powerful AI features inside of Adobe Illustrator. Some of these were just unveiled at Adobe Max, so you wanna make sure that you've got the latest version of Illustrator installed before going ahead with this tutorial. But today we're gonna to take a look at the text to vector option, the retype option, which is still in beta, as well as the mockup generator. So let's take a look. I'm gonna go ahead and click the rectangle tool and just make a five by five square so that it fits perfectly on my artboard. So once I've got something on the workspace, I can now use my contextual taskbar to put in a prompt. Right off the bat, what I wanna do is see some more of the options here. So I'm going to click on these three little dots and click on show properties panel. Now, what's cool about this new feature is that it allows you to generate a few different types of vector images. The first is to create a subject. The second is to create a complete scene or you can create an icon, which is a little more simplified, or a pattern. So you can use all four of these things here to generate something from scratch, which is pretty cool. So let's start off with scene, and I'll say cat cooking in a modern kitchen. And then I'll go ahead and click on generate beta and see what it makes. So you can see right away that I've got a few different vector images here of a cat preparing food in a kitchen, which is kind of fun. And you'll notice right away that it's actually all completely vector, right? So all of these points, everything is totally generated from scratch. Now, if I wanted to try something different, I can come back in here and let's go ahead and click on settings. Maybe let's crank up the detail because you can also choose how detailed you want your vector to be. And then I'll click generate once again. Now this time it generated three completely different images, all of which have a bit more detail. Now we're cooking, see what I did there? So let's say we are happy with our scene. Now I can just go ahead and draw like a new box in here, right? And let's say I wanna add something else to the scene. So let's say I want to add a small cartoon mouse with a chef hat. I wanna drag a square on top of my scene and change the type from scene to subject. Now if I do generate, Let's see if it sort of in integrates the mouse into the scene a little bit better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete some of these extra points on the outside so that there's no background. So we're gonna zoom in on our new mouse. We're gonna mouse on the mouse and delete some of these extra colors. So now just with a little bit more customization, I can go ahead and tweak these colors a little bit so that the mouse fits nicely into our scene. Right, and if I zoom out, now we've got a nice scene of a cat and a mouse cooking together in the kitchen. And hey, if you're new here, I'm Eric, and I create videos to show you what it's like working as a freelance key art and brand designer in New York City. Now let's say you're working on a word mark or a logo for a client, and the client decides that they change the name of what they want their business or product to be. Well, if you have outline text in the past, that would have been a nightmare, especially if you didn't have the font. But now with the new retype feature in Adobe Illustrator, it's a breeze. Let's say for example, I'm going to type out La Comida, the food, and I'm just gonna go ahead and choose a nice looking font here, like Glafton. And let's just go ahead and kern that a bit. So we get something like this. Now, if I were to outline this, right? And then let's say I change the color a little bit to maybe like a yellowish gold color. And I'm going to create a pattern here. Let's go to generate. And if there's ever a time where you can't find this bar, all you have to do is go to the window menu and choose contextual taskbar from the top. Now, once I've done that, I need to see my other properties. So I'll click on those three dots again and choose show property panel. So here I'm going to change my prompt for the pattern to colorful Mexican food, and then go ahead and click generate. Now let's see what it gives us. I'm kind of thinking that here, I'm just quickly kind of putting together like some brand elements to make a, a mock brand for a Mexican restaurant, um, just so I can show you how the retype tool works a little bit better. And I just wanted to have another graphic in there to work with. So right away, you can see that it gave me three pretty cool looking patterns. And I like this third one quite a bit. I like all the red in there, that's pretty nice. The first one is also nice. It's a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit more earthy and kind of muted, um, but let's go with this third one over here. What's nice is I can just scale my shape and the pattern will just adjust accordingly. And there's also another cool feature that I'm gonna show you here in just a second. So if I take my La Comida text, bring it to the top here, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and make that text white on top of my pattern. Uh, sometimes I think it might have trouble reading the text if it's on top of a busy pattern. So I can do, you know, 
one of two ways. I can either just move the pattern to the side and select it, or I can select the copy that I already have over here. So once I have my outline text selected, I'll go to the window menu, scroll down, and then choose retype beta. Now, once I've selected that, all I'm going to do is hit enter, and you can see right away that it's actually identified this font spot on. And I think that's because it's an Adobe font. So all of the typefaces that it's pulling from are Adobe fonts. Okay, so now if I click enter, it's going to convert that back into live type. And I can do the same thing here. And then we exit. And now we can literally just go back in and change this from La Comida to La Cantina. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty impressed by this new tool. I think it's really going to come in handy and I hope that you find it useful as well. So now that I've got my type and I have my pattern over here, what I'd like to do is maybe just sample some colors from the pattern, right? Like that red color is pretty nice. I also like that yellowish orange yellow color. And let's go ahead and sample that for our text. Now I noticed for some reason that it's actually not letting me change the color once I change the type back to live type. So I'm actually going to try and expand it here first, maybe convert it back to outlines and see if I can now change that. Okay, so now we have our red text. I'm going to bring this on top of the pattern. And let's go ahead and get that in place here. All right, so now that I've got my red text on top of the pattern, I wanna add a little bit of thickness to it here. So to do that, I'll go up to the object menu and choose path, offset path. And now what I wanna do is maybe offset this by about three pixels, click okay, and then command X on the keyboard to cut it, command F on the keyboard to paste it in front. And from here, I'm going to use my pathfinder to merge that together using the merge tool. And then I'm going to sample some of that gray color from the background just by pressing I to get my eyedropper, clicking and holding shift. And now I can go ahead and drag that to the fill. I don't want the stroke. Okay, and then I'm going to lock it, click again to select the red text and bring it to the front using the keyboard shortcut, command, shift, and the right bracket. So I've now got a nice thick border around that, which helps with the readability a little bit. But if I wanna change this color, I can go ahead and do that now that it's outlined. Or we can just go to a white like that. All right, so that's feeling pretty cool. We now have a custom pattern here with our type, which we created from retype. And I do just wanna note that this is still a beta feature. So sometimes it doesn't always recognize the fonts right away. While it does work pretty well with certain typefaces, um, generally some of the more funky or display fonts, it might not be able to identify very quickly. I should mention though that this awesome new feature also works with raster images. So aside from just having outline text, if you're in a situation where you want to change a typeface that's on a regular image, you can do that too. So for here, it's identified this typeface on the sign as interstate condensed, and it looks pretty accurate to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and select each of those blocks of text, choose apply, and that's going to convert it to the live text. Now I can exit, and it did change the color for some reason, which is a little bit weird, but if I select both of those and just sample the first one, I can now go in and change the text on this sign. And now I can realign it. And there you go, it's pretty cool. Very powerful new feature in Illustrator. So that's how you can use retype, not just on vector images, but also raster images as well. And now I'm gonna show you this third powerful feature, which is all about creating mockups from your vector art. And it works really well, especially for branding or any type of vector illustration that you want to apply to a product, which can really help to sell your idea to clients. Let's check it out. So let's say now I've got my type and my pattern. Maybe I'll just change this to solid black instead of white, just so we get a little more contrast out of it. What I can do, is use my own mockups, or I can actually use some presets which are pulled from Adobe Stock. So I'm going to select my pattern and my text together, copy them and paste them on my third artboard over here, and then go to the window menu, scroll down and choose mockup beta. Now, right off the bat, you'll see that there are some presets in here. We've got business cards, tote bags, and other branding graphics. But if I go here to the drop down menu, I can choose packaging instead. From here, let's go ahead and check out this box, right? So if I select mock-up, 
it's going to mock up these little previews for you, which you can then add to your scene. So let's say I want to add this box mockup into my scene. I'll just go ahead and click on that icon there to add it. Now, once you've got this in here, what's cool is you can just kind of click and drag this around to reposition your pattern on the box. You can also hold the shift key to scale it up and you can rotate it as well. Now, what's interesting to note here is that if I just escape for a second, if I just go back and let's say I want to modify this a little bit more, what I can do is extend this pattern right? Just like I showed you before. And I'm going to make my text a little bit smaller. And now let's say that I want to repeat this. Okay. So I'm going to select my outline text, go to my contextual taskbar and choose duplicate object, right? And I can now just make copies to fill up this vertical space a little bit. All right. And I'm going to create a few more copies here just so I can fill up some of this vertical space. Okay, now once I've created all of these copies, I'm going to go over here to the Align panel, and I'm just going to distribute those objects evenly. Now I'll grab all of that, my pattern and my type, and hope that Illustrator doesn't crash. But now all we're going to do is scale that down, click on the box again, and choose Mockup. Okay, so now I will add the box to the scene once again with our new sort of updated pattern that we want to apply. And this is sort of like a sticker or like a belly band kind of situation almost, something that would wrap around the box is what I'm envisioning. And you can see that as I scale this up, it's wrapping the bottom portion around the box, which is pretty cool. So if I continue to scale this up a little bit, you can see that we're now getting some, some interesting depth and perspective on it, right? And I'm just going to slide it over to the left a little bit more. It looks pretty good. But what if you don't want to use one of these preset mockups, right? What if you have your own image? Well, let me show you really quickly how you can do that. Now let's say you want to use an image of your own. This is a stock image that I just quickly downloaded from Unsplash. And I wanted to show you how else you can use the mock-up here to use your own images, right? So this will work with t-shirts, beer cans, boxes, bags, anything like that. What you want to do is drop in your graphic, hold the shift key and select your image, and then go back to the window menu and choose mock-up beta once again. And this time, instead of selecting one of those presets that uses Adobe Stock, I'm just going to click mock-up and it's now going to combine my vector with this bag. So that's pretty cool. You can see right away, I'm able to sort of manipulate this vector and kind of move it around to wrap it on the side of the bag, which we don't really want to do that, but you can see how it's updating in real time. Now let's say I've got another sort of mock-up here that I want to use for my La Bagel Delight logo. So now let's select the vector art and the bag together and choose mock-up. Now I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. Okay. And again, you can see if I kind of move this to the side here that it will wrap around the bag a little bit, right? And I can also rotate it and then maybe change the blending mode to multiply, or we can also try overlay, which also allows some of the nice details and colors in the bag to show through. Now, if I double click to go inside of this and I wanna modify the shape some more, it's worth noting that I can also move the bag around. And as I do that, it's going to affect the appearance of the logo. And so you can kind of see as I'm sliding the bag to the side, it should be wrapping, but it's actually getting cut off. So. That might just be a little glitch. But let's see what happens if I go the other way or maybe just move the bag up or down. It's a little bit slow when you're trying to kind of move this around with such a complex vector, but you can see that it is, it is kind of doing the job and doing what it's supposed to there and moving this around. But I'm just going to place it back so that our logo is centered. Okay, and maybe I'll just scale that down a little bit more. And there you go. It actually did a pretty good job of making that mock-up on the paper bag. So now you've seen how you can also take an existing logo and apply it to not only some preset mock-ups, but some mock-ups using images of your own. This is a really powerful feature to use in Adobe Illustrator. All right, creative, there you have it. Those are some of the new powerful AI tools inside of Adobe Illustrator. And if you wanna see how I created this logo that I showed you in the last example for La Bagel Delight, then you'll wanna check out this video next to see my entire redesign process. Thanks so much for watching, keep designing, and we'll see you in the next one.